Hello, world, and welcome to the Promo Noise podcast, the Promo Noise video cast. Promo Noise, of course, an educational company geared towards people in the promotional advertising industry. And I have such a real treat for you today. I'm here with an unbelievable guest, Mr. Kirby Hasselman, the owner and founder of Hasselman Marketing and Communications, also as a multipreneur, the owner of Hasselman Properties. And uh, you might be interested to find out that uh, Kirby, amongst all of the things that he does, has a fabulous podcast called Delivering Marketing Joy. I've been a guest on that podcast. I loved my time. I love <laughs> listening to that podcast. I find it to be awesome. Uh, he's also an ASI hot lister. Woo! <laughs> He is recognized by PPB Magazine as a rising star. He's a top 25 social media influencer, and he has a cool little ditty called The Monday Minute that I find invigorating, easy to get into, and always uh, ch chock full of fabulous advice. Kirby, welcome to the Promo Noise podcast and video cast. How are you today? Man, I'm doing better now. I need you to be my my uh, prep man. Like, kind of introduce <laughs> me every time I walk into a room. That was that was really really great, man. I really appreciate you taking the time and having me on here. Oh, it's uh, it's the thrill is all mine, Kirby. Um, it's funny. I like you. I'm a multipreneur, and what I've realized about my businesses is, is that every single one of them is an education business. Every mm -hmm. single one of them, and uh, it's interesting. I think we could say that about a lot of businesses in life, right? That uh, that we're educating, we're serving, we're helping. And having you as a guest on is going to be awesome, is awesome, mm -hmm. because you're able to educate people from a different vantage point. Um, promo noise, I'm typically talking to suppliers, and we're talking about what they offer, products, services. Sure. My market is distributors and some end users. And you're a distributor, and you see things differently than suppliers do. So mm -hmm. I'm so eager to, to get your take on our industry these days, Kirby, oh, and to pick awesome. your brain as to how you do what you do and how you continue to have so much vitality and success in this industry. So if if you don't mind, I'm going to jump right into it, Kirby, and I, yeah. I want to kind of get to know you a little bit and have our audience understand Kirby from a younger age. Um, <laughs> Kirby, you're you're a prolific content creator prolific every day there's something coming out from you have you always been a guy with imagination someone whose imagination is just running wild with ideas is this what you were like as a four-year-old five-year-old yeah yeah i think you know i think i was an only child until i was about nine and certainly i was one of those people who entertained myself pretty well yeah. um to, like you said telling stories and playing with gi joes and you know i i would be creating scenarios um where you know, I was telling stories like that, but I actually think, to be honest, Alex, and this is something I haven't talked about before, but I, I was a terrible college student, <laughs> but, okay. but I think that led me to where I am now. And that, what I mean by that is like, I went to the, to college to play tennis. That's what, that's why I wanted to go to college. I wanted to do that. Okay. Um, I didn't really love going to classes. I went as much as I had to go. What I did learn was how to play guitar in college. And I know you are an amazing guitar player, right? Um, and so one of the things I would do is I, as I was learning, I wanted to not just learn how to play other songs or uh, songs that other people had written, but I wanted to write my own songs. Right on. And so almost every day, I would literally, instead of going to the classes I should have been going to, I would sit and home and, and okay, you know, G, E minor, C, D, and I'd come up with some lyrics to go with it. And it was like every day, my friends who were doing what they were supposed to do and go to class would come home and I'd be like, hey, I've written another song. And people would come in and I would play it and whatever. And it was, that was when I think, A, it was really a, such a great creative outlet. You know what I mean? Like I started yes. to enjoy that. And then the other piece that I think it taught me was, you're going to create some things that are good. You're going to create some things that are terrible. And right. if you create enough of it, you'll get a few of them that are really good. Um, but you have to be willing to put it out there to find out. You have to be willing to have people critique it. You have to be willing to, to have the bravery to sort of push send and push publish. And I think that that's led me to do content in a way that like a lot of people won't because they have that voice in their head that says it's going to stink and people are going to make fun of them. And I feel like I kind of got control of that. I still have that voice, but I've got, I got control of it back then because I was like, well, I want people to, to hear this creativity or see this creativity. And I think that is still a skill I use today, if that makes sense. 
Yeah. And how fascinating those two elements, having the courage and the creativity, right? Yeah. To put it out there into the world. Do you sometimes put something out into the world and kind of wonder or go, Ooh, well, I don't know if that's <laughs> my best work or <laughs> yes, absolutely. that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, but, and I think, but I think that the, the, thing that holds so many people back. And I, I, again, you're a content creator, you get it, is that I always say that we all have that voice. We have that voice that says, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. Nobody cares. Um, or you're going to look silly or whatever it is. We've all got that, but I think we have to fight through it. And mm. the thing that has kind of helped that for me is there've been times where I'm like this piece of content, this thing I'm working on right now, this is the best thing I've ever done. This is going to change people's lives. And it's going to be, it's going to really blow people's socks off and no one cares. Like it is, like <laughs> yes. it is met with complete crickets. Yes. And, and then I've done stuff where I'm like, okay, I said I was going to have a blog post this day, or I've said I was going to do a video this day. It, this is all I got. And I'm going to, I'm going to spend 10 minutes on it, 15 minutes out. And I'm going to hit publish because I said I would. Yeah. And then that one does really well. And so what I've learned is, is I'm not always the best judge of what my audience thinks is valuable. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I just need to keep pushing play. I need to keep pushing publish. And so, yeah, some of it's not my best work, but some of it is not the stuff I thought was the best work. Does that make sense? It's like, I need the audience to decide. Yeah, absolutely. And you said something quite fascinating that should end up in quotes across this screen when we <laughs> go to launch this and it's uh, push publish, right? Yeah. Keep on pushing publish. Yeah. Uh, how fascinating. What a, what a cool concept. Uh, I love this. Um, how has content creation, how mm. has pushing publish helped advance your company, Kirby? Yeah. Well, I think a couple ways. So number one, there's just what I always talk about is like the difference between brand marketing and direct marketing. You mentioned that you create your educational company you have educational companies yes. and that's truly what I'm trying to do with the content is trying to help lift people up. Right. Well, the pushback I'll get from my contemporaries and people who might be listening to this will say, well, but how do you measure, what do you sell from it? And I think it's difficult to say how many pens I sold because I did a, a, a nice video about goals. Yes. But it's the difference between brand marketing and direct marketing. Each one of these pieces is brand marketing. It's like the Super Bowl ad. Coca-Cola does not expect you to leave the Super Bowl party <laughs> to go run out and buy Coke right then. They want you to be top of mind when it, you go to the grocery store. I think good content marketing that provides value up front is like that. It, mm -hmm. it, it is, it's brand marketing. They're seeing your name, even if they aren't watching the video, right? Oh, there's, there's Alex again with another podcast. And so when you know it comes up that they need to make a purchase, you're top of mind. I love that. Yeah. And then the second piece, honestly, Alex, is it took me from being a salesperson to a marketer in okay. the minds of my customers, right? And so it went from people coming to me and saying, hey, we've got this event coming up in two weeks, right? And we need pens or we need bags or whatever it is. They, not everybody, I still get that call. Don't get me wrong. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I get a lot more calls that say, hey, I've got an event coming up in six months. Can mm. you help us plan it? They yes. started looking at me differently and that was the biggest direct impact to the business. Fabulous. Ooh, I, I love the sound of that. Yeah. Um, tell me something, Kirby, when you talk about brand and you talk about this brand exercise, are you the brand when all of this content mm. is coming out? Yeah, I think that the, it, for a long time, the answer was yes. Like, and so, and we actually did a, where we were check, checking what Google, you know, the number one search 10 years ago under Hosman marketing was, was Kirby Hosman. Okay. Um, and so I really looked at it, honestly, just from, I, I'm a student, just like everybody else. And I look at what Gary Vaynerchuk does yep. and like people know about Vayner media because of Gary Vaynerchuk. Right. Yes. Yes. Um, and so that was sort of my, my model is that I wanted to put out value and I want to be out there so much that then people, then it just builds up the brand. And then I pull awesome and marketing along with it. Yes. Now, I will say that one of the things that I'm really proud of is I'm starting to see uh, other members of our team following and creating content. So like my my daughter, Jade, who I know you've interacted with, is doing TikToks and Instagrams and doing more product-centric stuff. 
Super. And she does it from a totally different perspective than me. And I think that's starting to really help the company because people are starting to know other faces that come with it. But yeah, I think it started with, I want to build up my brand and pull, you know, Hossman Properties, Hossman Marketing along with it. Mm, I find that really interesting. Mm -hmm. And it's only natural that that the whole umbrella is growing, right? Your daughter yeah. included. Yeah. Uh, I think you work with your wife on the property side, right? I've seen a couple yeah, of videos. The two of you are, are, are constantly working together. She's um, in charge. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my wife's in charge too. I'm allowed yeah. to be doing this podcast right yeah, now. Right. Um, you, you know, but it's, re it's really fascinating because, it, you know, the reason that I'm attracted to you, Kirby Hasselman, mm. is that it, your energy shines through in your content. Mm -hmm. Um, I, it, it, there's a positivity that radiates. There's a, there's a thought that I can jump onto and I feel this vibration. And so mm -hmm. I'm drawn to Kirby Hasselman as a brand. And as you do that repeatedly, as you've done over the years, it would seem to me that you're growing, you know, brands all under this umbrella, you know, your, your daughter's burgeoning, uh, the yeah. company's burgeoning. And it's it's really interesting it, the way we look at brands these days. I mean, they really take on this um, this entity, don't they? They they really yeah. are a living, breathing thing, and yeah. uh, treated, and nurtured with care, uh, they grow, they support. And it's interesting, like you can't just kill a company, can you? You can mm. bankrupt a company, but th there's stock in the energy still, and it might be crappy stock. Uh, it might be <laughs> fabulous stock, but right. there's energy that permeates, isn't there? And so yeah. I find this really interesting when I look at a guy like you who's who's putting out this content that's and, and the content is positive, it's educational, it's inspirational. Um, there's energy in that, Kirby. And this is why I asked that question about brand is the, the brand is this living, breathing thing that you have um, that you've created, right? Yeah, I appreciate you saying that. I, you know, I think that couple thoughts, I guess, is yes. And and I would also say I, I'm fairly intentional about that, right? Like I, mm. I, you don't see me complaining much on social media because that's not, um, that's on, not on brand, I would say, uh, yeah. for me. On the other side, I would also say that it's important to, to be sort of authentic so that you don't have to, 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 to work at it so hard, right? I'm, I'm a fairly positive guy by nature. Um, people around me know that, that if I can find the silver lining in every gray cloud, it yes. doesn't mean that I don't see the gray cloud. Right. Yeah. And, and that's, that's a skill I've really worked on. Cause I don't know that I had that as a teenager. <laughs> right. Um, but I, and, and I think that that is one of the places we can get in trouble is where we just say, well, this is the kind of brand we want to be. So we're going to, purport to be that, I think those kind of companies, those kind of individuals tend to get themselves in trouble because it's really hard to, to continue down that road. And I, th I think a pastor once said you, to be inconsistent with what you consistently think, right? If, if your thoughts are not consistently positive, it's really hard to mm -hmm. long-term be a, a positive person. You have to yes. get control of that if you want to change it. And so, um, yeah, I think viewing yourself as a personal brand is really powerful. And I think that if you consistently do the work and are willing to put yourself out there and overcome that voice, it can make a, a big impact on whatever company you want to build. Yeah, without question. And you mentioned that term vulnerability, which mm. um, is spoken about a lot these days, vulnerability and, and uh, genuineness. And I think you're you're spot on with that. I think um, that of the eight billion people on the planet, all of us have our challenges, right? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's it's funny how all of these challenges really distill down to a few things that you can probably count on on two hands, mm -hmm. right? right? Every circumstance is different, but the commonalities, the universality of the challenges are the same. And so when we're vulnerable and when we do that mm -hmm. within our brand, I think that we are more human. I think that we're more yeah. uh, more relatable to people, aren't we? Yeah. And I think it's that, that kind of goes to what we were talking about earlier. So I remember vividly this one time where, um, you know, I, I about a week previous, I'd written a blog post that I thought was amazing, right? Yeah. I, I was really, I was the expert and I was like, um, going to tell people how to live a great life or whatever. And nobody cared. Um <laughs> So I was getting ready to go to a business meeting and I was, I had done a thing where I was posting a blog post every day yeah. and I wrote a blog post that said, I'm not for everyone. I remember that that's what it was called. And that, that some people, you know, don't like me because I've done them wrong. And some people don't like me because they know the person that I did something wrong to. Mm. And then some people just don't like my face, right? For, there's no reason. They just don't like my face and okay. I'm not for everyone. 
And letting myself understand that was kind of freeing for me. I wrote that blog in about seven minutes. I pushed publish. I went to a couple meetings and I came back and like it went really, it did really well. Yes. But it was about me like giving something of myself that I don't always give saying, look, I'm not, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. And I think that when I write things that are, like you said, vulnerable and more relatable, those are the ones that tend to relate a little bit better because people can see, you know, there's, it's a mirror a little bit more than it is just a video. Yes. And as a fellow musician, you would probably appreciate this. Um, you know, a lot of my favorite songs were recorded by artists um, and done in the moment. It's like, mm -hmm. I feel so emotional about this. I'm, I've got to get this out. They right. play a few chords and the whole basis of a number one hit song is done in about five to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of power in harnessing that raw energy, that yeah. real energy, right? And like you said, you're positive by nature, nine out of 10 times you're positive. And when you throw in that one where it's like, huh, I wonder about this. And I, I feel a little uncertain about this. If you actually articulate that, you'll find that you'll get a lot of feedback. Oh my gosh, Kirby, like I can help. Like I want to, yeah. I want to yeah. talk to you about this. I feel this as well, right? You'll find yeah. that commonality. Hey, in a world that is evolving as quickly as it is. And, you know, previously we had to build our brands, um, in, in interesting ways, we would do that with traditional print advertising. Some people would do that through television. There were all kinds of different ways that we could uh, display our brand to the world. These days, uh, there's unlimited platforms to be able to do that through social media. Yeah. And now we've got this, this tool, AI, that is revolutionizing you know, the way we conduct business. Are you using AI at all with regard to your content yeah. creation, Kirby? Yeah, uh, for me, um, this is something uh, my buddy Bill Petrie and I talk a lot about. And Bill is 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 further ahead down the path on this than I am, yeah. um, but he sort of inspires me to continue to push. Where I I use it, I've played with it. Where I'm like, okay, write a blog post of 300 words that is this. I've found that to be not great. Like that that hasn't been, and that's probably good. It's, it's just not a human yet, right? It doesn't articulate things. Sure. Honestly, where I utilize it most of all is for um, idea generation, ideation to, um, you know, what are some blog post topics that I could write about? What are some videos I could cover under like um, specific issues for uh, branded merchandise? And so then all of a sudden, you know, 10 different topics will pop up. Three or four of them will be really, really good topics. Yes. Which is great. Right. And then, you know, a couple of them I'll do a couple, three I'll throw out. And then the other place we're using it is because we do um, social media management for other companies. Um, and my uh, Dustin, my lead digital uh, marketing manager, he'll utilize it to help him write social posts so He's because he's the one who's the voice. And he's like, all of these start to sound the same. And I want each brand to have its own voice. So it he'll utilize it to help him just ideate social media posts. He'll still edit them, still make them sound human, still make them sound like the brand but it helps to just get the juices flowing. And that's how we as a company right now are utilizing AI the most. How interesting. Yeah. So one of my businesses, we help people write books and mm -hmm. uh, we've realized that uh, um, you know writing prompts are a fabulous way to get started. Yeah. And it, it, it has no bearing on the content that's about to come out. It's just a starting place. Yes. So I love this idea of asking for topics. Hey, what's yeah. resonating right now? What, yeah. What's being hit the most in North America with regard to pens? I, I wanna know yeah. what people are talking about when it comes to pens. Yeah. So, so that's, that's a really cool concept. It's, it's a prompt for you to be able to unleash your creativity. Yeah. Um, and that's all it is, right? Just a prompt. Well, and I think what, so when I'm talking to people about doing content, Alex, and I'm sure you have a similar conversation. So I don't know what to post about. I don't know what to create video about. I don't know what, I'm like, yeah, you do. It's the stuff you're already talking about. And so what I'll tell people is take the five or 10 top questions that you find yourself answering all the time. Yeah. You know, what is vector art? That's a, mm. that's a blog post that should be on every distributor's website on the country, yeah, right? Because sure. you're answering that question all the time. So, But there are, there are nine or 10 other questions that you're probably answering all the time. Um, and that's exactly what some of the best content comes from is just is answering good questions. And that's where AI can help. I mean, one of the most read blog posts on our, um, on our website is what does a custom t-shirt cost? Ah, right? interesting. Okay. And, and it's like a 
1500 or 2000 word um, blog post because it's an, it's a really hard question to answer. It's like, ask yeah. me, what does a house cost? What does a, what does a car cost? Yeah. And so we went through every detail, but just answered the question in the most detailed way we could. Well, that's a piece of great content, right? Well, that's where chat GPT or some of the other open AIs can help you um, kind of come up with those questions that people are asking. Yeah. Yeah. I love that philosophy. I think that's really cool. Hey, there's a saying um, that I've heard quite a few times recently, and it goes something like this. Hey, if you want something done, ask the busiest guy, you know, to help you. Um, so, yeah. so bearing that in mind with all of these endeavors that you do every day, all the content that you're creating, how do you find the time? And do you have extra time, Kirby? Do you enjoy uh, life outside of business or <laughs> is business a part of your overall life? Um, I'm getting into the life philosophy here. Yeah, um, no, I love it. Yeah. How, how, do you, how do you feel about that? And how do you find time to get all these things done? Yeah, I think it's evolved, right? Like, so at first, you know, my, my saying about life was if it's to be, it's up to me. Like, so I will do it all myself and okay. I will work. 14 hours a day. Now, yes. I, I had a great partner in my wife who helps kind of keep me balanced and say, hey, time to come to dinner. Hey, we've got this coming up, whatever. Um, but I think the answer today, is, and, and okay, let me back up. And also I was like, I, I was willing to put in that extra work. I'm like, people would say to me, well, what's your ROI on this content? And I would say, I don't know yet, but I know it's the right thing. So I'm going to and when people would say, well, how do you find time? I'm like, well, how do you find time to call your customers back? Yeah. Right. And yeah. they'd say, well, I have to do that. Well, that's how I viewed content as a brand building exercise. I felt like it was that important. So you make time for the stuff that's really important. Yes. The The answer today, though, is, you know, uh, is I'm incredibly intentional about my time. I do still get up early in the morning. Like my morning is fairly sacred. I get more done. I'm I'm, I'm a 5, 530 in the morning. I get done. By the time I get to the office and, you know, the office opens at nine, I've gotten most of that kind of work already complete. Awesome. Because I, I struggle with getting stuff done here because that's where the phone's ringing and, and people are wanting your time or whatever. So yep. that part, I've got an incredible team now that I've been able to um, kind of hand a few things off to. I still mm -hmm. do editing. I still do some of that. And then the other thing is I'm constantly looking for better ways to do it. So like, mm. I just, I just listen. And that's, I, I think that's the part I was just talking to somebody today. I'm like, there's not a point where you're like, okay, I'm done. I'm done developing. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a finished product, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, for sure. For I'm, sure. I literally just like uh, probably a month ago, finished a book called buy back your time. Ooh, um, cool. Yeah. And it's, it's really good. And he, that was, I'm like, okay, I'm constantly looking for better ways to do it. And his, his philosophy is that you don't hire people to grow the business. You hire people to buy back your time. And the, if you hire the right people, they will help you grow the business. Cause you're going to be outsourcing the things that put you in a space where you're doing the most valuable thing for your company. So this, uh, probably about a month ago, one of the concepts in the book that I've heard a bunch of times, Alex, where people are like, uh, you know, CEO shouldn't be managing his own email or yep. his or her own email. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I always thought that was bananas. Like, what do you mean I'm not an uh, answering my own emails, right? Um, but for whatever reason, I got this book and I'm like, okay, I've not tried this. And he gave kind of a system on how to do it. And about a month ago, um, I started handing off managing my email box. And I will tell you, you do not know how much time you're spending there. Um, and the key then is once you get a little bit of that time back, you're like, okay, I'm not just going to a beach. I've got to do the things that only I can do in, in the organization that will help push us forward. Yes. Um, and so I, it's kind of a long answer to your question, but the whole idea is I am trying to do the most valuable thing for the organization. And I've found that one of those three is creating content. Awesome. And there's so much to unpack there. And one of the things that uh, that strikes me is, really interesting here is this notion of buying back your time mm -hmm. and then investing that time in things that are going to move you forward, right? Investing yeah. that in your vision, in your, in your desire. What is it that I truly, truly want? Yes. And, um, and, and where I want to go following this is, um, you know, how does that permeate into your household? I mean, mm -hmm. you guys are joint business owners and on all kinds of different projects. 
So do you find that that it's beneficial to have your family understand the business, be part of the business in that sense? Uh, business becomes fun. It becomes a family affair. It becomes something that um, isn't segregated. And it's like, well, I do yeah. this during these hours, but you know, yeah. do, do you find that happens with business? So I, I find that it happens for Amy and I. Yeah. I'm not sure I would prescribe it to everybody. I think different couples could make this work. Um, we always have been able to to work this way. And I think that the way that we have is that while we are both entrepreneurs, we both, there are things that I'm in charge of and there are things that she's in charge of. Yes. And uh, and both of us have different strengths. Um, when Hosman Properties started to take off, we got a big project. And um, it was a, just down the street here. It was a, a building that was built in 1915. It was, it had been, you know, not cared for, let's just say for many years. And so we bought it at auction and Amy said, she jumped in and said, okay, this is going to be my project. And I'm kind of a bull in a China shop on stuff like that. And so I couldn't help myself. And all of a sudden I was making to-do lists and stuff like that. And she's like, Kirby, is it your project or is it my project? Mm. It's your project, dear. I will. Get, but then it's like, okay, cool. Um, now I can, I actually, that was kind of a relief. I could now say, okay, you tell me what you need to do. You need me to help you with. And other than that, I'll get out of your way. And I think the same is true with Amy in, um, in the marketing side is that she's an incredible voice in the room, but she only voices her opinion when I ask for it. Uh -huh. And, and then the other piece I'd also say, is she's really good at telling me when to shut up. Uh, and, so, and with love, of course. Uh, of course, but like at dinner time, you know, this is, this is my hobby. This is what I do. I love the entrepreneurship side of the game. Amy enjoys it but needs downtime. She needs to shut it off and talk about something else. And so she just needs to tell me and, but then I need to respect that. And so that's how we've made it work. Um, and is, is that essentially when she's in charge, she's in charge. When I'm in charge, I'm in charge, but she's really good at going, okay, we need to do something else right now. <laughs> and we go, okay, whatever you say, dear. Right on, right on. And if I'm hearing it correctly or feeling it correctly, it's it's really all about the communication, right? It sounds oh, like you guys are communicating yeah. constantly. And um, I've found that to be the key in any endeavor I've ever embarked upon, whether that yeah. be business, whether that be relationship. Um, it's it's always cliche about because it's true. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, and you know, funny enough, Kirby, what, what a lot of people forget is that uh, you ought to be communicating with yourself as well. You have to check mm -hmm. in. And I, I think oh, a lot wow. of people miss that. It's like communication is outside. It's with somebody else. It's with mm -hmm. my coworkers. It's with my employees. It's with my wife, you know, whoever that may be. Um, but I have found recently that checking in with myself and asking myself, hey, how are you doing today? Like, how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. um, you, do you really want to keep on doing this? Or is this something that you don't want to be doing anymore? And and um, the answer is always there. It's like, yeah. you feel it in your heart and then it hurts a little bit more when you're when you're yeah. on the right track. You're like, oh, shoot, I really have to investigate that. So so that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. And I'll tell you, Alex, I think you're, you're hitting on something really powerful. I, I, I'm not going to get this study right, but recently I heard a study where they said that 70% uh, of men, and it might have been even higher, 80% of men, if you gave them the choice of spending 15 minutes with alone with their thoughts, with no distractions, mm -hmm. just their thoughts, or take an electric shock, they would take the electric shock. Holy smokes, really? Yeah, it, it, oh. it was absurd, the number that of people who are literally just unwilling or afraid to be alone and be introspective because I, I think they're afraid of what they might find. And and gosh, I think that's one of the most powerful tools in, in growth because just like you said, you need to check in and go, is this what I want to do? Is this... Is you know, I, I heard some somebody say the other day that prayer is talking to God. Yeah. Intuition is God talking to you. Oh, and so how cool. Just be open to that. How voice, cool. Yeah. And what what an interesting study. I, I gotta find that study. Yeah. Um because uh, you know, I, I'm the kind of guy who um who who just delights in 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 sitting <laughs> with my own thoughts. I, I I love that. I could do that for days on end. <laughs> Where I missed the mark for years, though, Kirby, was checking in with my heart. Like I, mm. like I completely ignored it for decades, <laughs> to my complete and utter detriment. Like, yeah. like complete. And so, yeah. 
and so now this distinction you make, you know, like there, there's, there's the, there's the praying and then there's the listening to God, the intuition component. I see that intuition as, as, as heart-based, right. Yeah. Um, you know, if I were to exchange yes. that concept for, for another word. Um, so I, I love this Kirby. And this is why I love speaking with you because <laughs> I find you to be so balanced cerebrally and, and mm, heartfelt. Yes. And I, I wanted to spend time with you to be able to capture this so that people understand that there are so many different ways to run businesses, so many mm. different ways to look at them. And uh, I really admire and appreciate how you run your business, how you create That's your right. content and the energy that comes through that. Um, just a couple more questions for you, sure. Kirby, because I'm I'm fascinated by your take on, on the industry. Where are we going in the next five years, Kirby, with, with, with AI now at the forefront of, of people's minds? Um, with sustainability being so um, at the front of our minds as well. Um, I don't know if it's the same thing where you live, but in Canada right now, where I'm based, our country's on fire. The province mm -hmm. of Quebec is on fire. The province of Nova Scotia is on fire. Alberta has been on fire for a while. And so we're talking about our choices and this world mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and the world imploding. Um, so from a product perspective and a sustainability perspective, this these are things that probably aren't going to go away. Where do you see our industry going from technology to sustainable needs to where we're heading as 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 a human as, as as a human race? Um, yeah. and all this division that we've seen, uh, left, right, uh, yeah. you know, the political divide. What's what's what do you what do you see in your crystal ball, Kirby, over the next few years? Man, that's a big question, brother. I know, uh, I know, <laughs> but I love these questions. <laughs> uh, no, it's good. So, uh, I guess a couple thoughts, and then if I don't, if if you want to dig into anything, please feel free. Yeah. Um, so, one of the things I would say is I live in an area that's much, is like the the foothills of the Appalachia, and so it's it's fascinating to me because suppliers come in and say, "Hey, are your your customers asking about sustainability?" And the, the fascinating part of that is my, the answer is no, they're not. Mm. Now. They are open to the conversation if I lead it. So what I'm excited about seeing in our industry is I see us leading that conversation. I'm sure end users in different parts of the, the, the world are leading the discussion, but I feel that suppliers, to be honest with you, are doing a really good job of coming into offices and coming into Zoom meetings and saying, look, this is a mission that we are taking very seriously and here's here's why and here's where. Here, here it kind of educating those of us who want to do a better job yeah. Um, but that's not where we've grown up. So I think that's number one, as I see a positive in that way, that the industry is starting to see it and starting to feel it and starting to lead, quite frankly, in it. Mm. Um, so that's that's a positive. Um, we've got a lot of work to do for sure, but I think that the it all starts with recognizing the challenge and trying to lean in to fix it. Um, the second thing is I think, branding is going to become even more important mm -hmm. um, because with, we talked about AI, you know, when you search Google, um, Hey, where can I find blah, blah, blah. Um, well, Google gives you a page or two of options, right? I mean, yep. more than two pages of options, but nobody gets that far. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> True. But as the searches become more audible and the searches become more AI driven, they're going to give you an answer not a selection of answers, which means that being the choice, being the top rated brand in that search is going to become more and more and more important. And so that's where I view, um, it's one of the reasons I've doubled down, right? You, if, if you're paying attention, I'm doing more and more content, not less, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and because I, again, back to that brand marketing, I believe podcasts like yours and Facebook reels and YouTube shorts and TikTok videos. We're, we're going all in because I want when people, I want our Hosman marketing or our voice Kirby Hosman to be synonymous with the thing we do. And I think that that is one of the things in the next five years, we're going to see that brands become even more important than they are today. Ooh, how interesting. And I think this speaks to, um, you know, a, a coming generation of creatives I think this will unleash yeah. people's creativity yes. and that and that's a great thing. I you know I hear a lot of talk about uh AI diminishing our creativity and our imagination and I I I think the contrary. I think that it it certainly has the capability of doing that if you lean on it all of the time. 
Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm quite excited for the same answers to appear over and over and over again so that my answers that are independent of AI actually stand out and shine. So yeah. I see a tremendous opportunity in the future with regard to those who continue to think, uh, those who continue to to find joy um, mm-hmm. in in creativity and in helping and serving yeah. humanity, right? There, there's a whole world open to us. You know, I think it's fascinating, Alex. I and we've seen this that every time there's a new breakthrough in technology, we're afraid of it yeah. as a culture, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I was I was fascinated. This is going to be a weird example, but um, remember when Pokemon Go came out and I like the, the the people were and the kids were were going around and getting their Pokemons or whatever. And it was so fascinating to me that came out and then people were freaking out that kids are going to run into the street and get hit by cars because they're chasing. I'm like, man, you talk about going to the absolute worst case scenario. Three weeks before we were complaining, kids don't go outside. Yes. Now they're going outside, but you're doing it wrong. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> you know, guess. like, because it, you're not doing it the way we did it 25 years ago. It, like, yes, there's going to be challenges with this. And yes, this is huge. And we need to be leaning into the technology. But I've watched this happen over and over again is a new thing comes out and everybody freaks out and it's going to be, you know, Terminator immediately. <laughs> and it's like, Guys, lean in, learn it, utilize it as a tool. The folks who do that will be further ahead. I couldn't agree more. And it harkens back to the beginning of this conversation when you talked about your life as an optimist. You know, mm-hmm. you find the silver lining. The clouds are always there. The, yeah, actually, sure. we need clouds, don't we, to grow the trees <laughs> and to grow the flowers. So yes. they're good things. And I think that those clouds are the challenges and the obstacles that stand in our way. And it's through those challenges, it's through those obstacles that we learn, that we grow, that humanity improves, sure. right? So yeah. uh, I think you're right on with your assessment of AI. And uh, I think we've gone through this before, like you say, the advent of the phone, the advent of the computer, the advent of internet. Um, this is nothing new to us, right? We fear yeah. it at first, and then we figure out our place. And we're like, ah, like, I can coexist. And not only can I coexist, I can thrive, yeah. So yeah, I can that, utilize the tool. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's amazing. I could spend all afternoon philosophizing <laughs> with you, Kirby. Um, I, I just want to thank you for sharing your, your, your knowledge with regard to content creation and brands. I think anybody who's listening today, whether that is a distributor or a supplier or an end user, uh, listening to what Kirby has to say about content and what that's doing for his business, what that's doing uh, to serve his clientele and and the people that digest and and take part in his content is fabulous. Um, I'm just so I, I just I'm enamored every single time I see your your content, Kirby. So mm-hmm. keep on making it. Um, it's been a joy to have you on this program. Thank you, thank you for spending some of your time with me today. Uh, I really Dude. appreciate it. I really appreciate it. always every time we get a chance to talk to you. I remember we we met at like a power meeting or an EME and you had your guitar out and you uh, you're one of those people who brightens every room. So I really appreciate spending the time, brother. I appreciate it, Kirby. Hey, where can people get a hold of you? Yeah, so I mean it, obviously our um our distributorship is at hosmanmarketing.com and then you know for your listeners, if they're interested, we've created a new framework. Um, so in, in case you're listening, it's not a gotcha. This is free, um, but it's targetpromo.hosmanmarketing.com. We'll give you the, the PDF of the target marketing playbook for free. So if you're interested. That is awesome. Everyone who's watching and listening right now to have that target playbook is massive. I hope you do take Kirby up on that and check out that site and uh, download that information because I know that anything you put out, Kirby, is going to be beneficial. So I am going to go get myself a copy and I am going to (laughs) institute a lot of those practices as I do whenever I engage with your content. Thank you once again. Uh, I do appreciate your time. And uh, Kirby, it's been an honor to speak with you. Back at you, bud. Thanks a lot. All right. Cheers, man.